Hi right, folks, uh, so what we actually have to do today is uh, question two, uh, whereby it says the elevation end view of a tetrahedron are given. So we've got the 3D graphic here. We've got the elevation here, the end elevation here. And it says we have to draw the plan of the solid. So the plan is going to be lo located down here. And on a separate part of the drawing, construct a true shape of the surface ABC. So you can see straight away we're given A, we're given C, we're given B, and we're given the three points as well located over here in our... Uh, end elevation. So straight away, first of all, I could actually locate them on my 3D graphics. So we can see A here is at the top, so that's where my A is. Um, I can see B is out here at the front from it, so it's going to come out here, so there's my B. And I can see C is directly below A, and I can see it's out here, so here is our C. So, just given that, we're going to have to get the true shape of that surface right there. Okay, so just going to Put a little bit of shading on that, so you can kind of know which surface it is. So it's that surface right there. Now, first of all, it says draw the plan of the solid. Now, no one should have any problem at this point, so I'm just going to crack on with the plan. Okay, as you can see, I have now constructed the plan of the object and I've located my points A, B and C on that. And what we have to do, as I said, in the second part is on a second part or on a separate part of the sheet, which is going to be over here, I'm going to construct a true shape of the structure A, B, C. So we're going to see a triangle there. Now, there are a couple of ways that we could do this. Um, you could look out along it and project an auxiliary view and you would get the angle of it and then you could look straight at the true shape of it or we could just try and find it which would be an e and that would be kind of a messy way of going about it or you could also find it by literally just getting the true lengths of the lines AB, BC and AC and join them up and straight away so looking at our tree views what I want to get is I want to determine the tree the tree true lengths that I'm going to need and I want to basically decipher them so I'll be able to draw the triangle now First of all, I'm going to look at the three lines. So I'm going to start with the line AC, which is this line here. And is there anywhere in these three views, this one, this one, and this one, that I know it's a true length? Because if I was to actually measure all those lines, I guarantee you they'd all be a little bit different. Just looking at that one there, it appears to be about 40 and a half millimeters. This is the line AC in plan. It's about 24, 25. And this one here is about 47. And it's just a case then, are any of them true lengths? We have to figure it out. So, looking at this, that looks there like it might be a true length. However, when I look at it in plan, yeah, it's, it's, it's up for it and down, but I don't think this is the true length. This could be the true length, but I know A to C here in my end elevation is actually the true length. And the reason for that is, is because that is actually parallel. See this line here, AC in my elevation view? That is actually parallel with my end vertical plane, which means when I'm looking straight at it in this direction, in this direction here, that means that the line A to C in my end elevation, which is from here to here, that is actually my true length of the line AC. So I'll just write in that there, true length AC. Okay, so that is one of the lines that I'm going to need, starting off. Now, that's AC. Uh, A to B, we'll figure out in a minute, but now we're on to BC. Is there any part on one of these three views that that is a true length? So if I look at BC here, it's going from here to here. Looking at that straight away, I can kind of tell it's not a true length. This one looks like it might be a true length, uh, but that one is actually a little bit shorter than this one. And this one is actually the true length. So it is. And there is, So that is the true length of my line BC. So there we go. I've got two of them so far. The reason that one is the true length of my line BC is because BC here in elevation is parallel with the XY line. I know it's sitting on it, but if it's sitting on it, it's also parallel. That means because it's on the ground, when we look down at it on top of the ground, that means in plan view, it's going to be a true length. So there we go. Now I've got two of my lines. 
And then the last one I need is a true length of the line A to B. Now, looking at that, A to B here, that can't be a true length because in this view, when I'm looking at this view here, is when I'm looking at the object in this direction. And that can't be a true length because when I look at that line AB there, it is not perpendicular to this, to this here, to this direction. If it was perpendicular, it would be like the line AC. But so that can't be a true length over here. Now, in plan view, I know it can't be a true length because once again, when I look down on top of it, in that direction, this line AB is not perpendicular. Whereas BC was, that's why BC, we could actually take it as a true length. And obviously when I look at this guy over here, same thing, it's not a true length in plan. So how am I going to make it a true length if I, if in, in all these views it's not actually a true length? And the way I can do that is I can use cones as a principle. Now I've explained, the, I've explained this in a previous video, whereby if we imagine, forget about the actual object here, and we just took A as the apex of a cone, and B as a point on the ground of the cone where it is just an upright cone, and we take it as a generator. And what we want to do, so we have that generator down here, and what we want to do is we want to make that circle for our cone. And we know when we get that B and we rotate it around to make our extreme generator, which would be a line that is parallel with the XY line. So from A, I'm going to go parallel to the XY line, like that, which is parallel with the XY line. And from B, I will rotate it up. And now the new position of B is just up here. And that line there is the extreme generator of a cone. So if I bring that up to my elevation, all that has happened is B has moved from here to here. So B has moved from here to here. And now what I have found on this line here is the true length this guy here is the true length of my line AB. Okay? Now, at this point, I have the three true lengths. I have the true length of AB, I have the true length of AC, and I've got the true length of BC. So with the three true lengths, I should be able at this point to create my true shape. So I'm going to take all of them. I'm just going to pick a point right here. Doesn't matter where exactly. And I'm going to call that point A. Okay, so I'll take the line AB first, which is from there to there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, from A, I'm going to swing an arc. So that arc there, from A to somewhere going along that arc, is going to be B. Okay, now I'm just going to make that line now, somewhere along it. I'm going to pick about here. I'm going to imagine that as my B. So now there, at this exact point, I have found B. And now what I have to do is I'm going to get the line AC. That's true length from A to C. So from A, somewhere in there is going to be C. And now I have to get the line BC, that distance there. And somewhere on B, and there we go. And where the two arcs cross each other, that is my C. And just to be able to complete it, this will be the true shape. That's my line AC, true length. This is my line BC. And my original line at the very start that I started with, AC. So that is the true shape surface A, B, C. Question complete. And all that was actually really in that question, the hardest part was literally just recognizing that the line AB, if we took it as the generator of a cone and rotate it up to get the true length. Question done.